Torga the Exile, who remains an exile, having won what she considers her freedom in the last session of this series, is pulling up a bucket from a well on a secluded backyard in the city of Port Deepwater, upending the bucket of water over her head and repeating this maneuver a couple of times, having run afoul quite recently of a chamber pot being dumped out an upstairs window. And while this is no doubt not a pleasant experience, it was a rather minor inconvenience compared to the tremendous success of being able to not only win her freedom from her imprisonment prior to being picked up by the emissary, but also ridding herself of the emissary through fortunate happenstance in this city that is currently at unrest and being able to secure her freedom without breaking her oath. What's she going to do with that freedom? Well, only one way to find out. Hello friends, Anderson here. Welcome back to Nave, the Zero Prep campaign, where we follow the exploits of Torga the Orc, the Exile, who is now free to go where she pleases, provided the mobs currently running loose in the city let her. If you're so inclined, feel free to like, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel, all that kind of YouTube stuff. Let's get to it. I have decided to award 100 XP for the various endeavors in the last session because I do feel we accomplished something meaningful that is comparatively little, but there's also comparatively little actual non-railroaded things that have happened so far. We have, during play, mostly spent some time discovering where we are and what the situation is and who we are, and now we are closer to in the middle of things. And this is where I think the real Demon Souls begins. Uh, so, last time when she ended up on the receiving end of that chamber pot, Torga was making her way through this city of strife and blockade to get to a, an inn at the market where traditionally the caravaneers hang out, the rumors are flying. And so I think we'll roll up one more event because of the market. So this market is a behemoth of a market sort of adjacent to the sea with moorings running out into the bay where ships are docked and being unloaded. Market itself uh, overlooked by the keep and just adjacent to all these uh, fine noble houses and merchant houses and where cranes are pulling wares up into attic storage compartments and where wagons are being loaded and unloaded and it's just a whole hustle and bustle of activity so there is enough room for an event that could accost us before we manage to cross that square and get towards this inn that we still also need to give a name so events we still use city state encounters with its d1000 table so we roll blue red blue and we have 536 that is a love making couple in public okay um while that in and of itself doesn't really make a whole lot of difference it's perhaps an indicator on the overall vibe of how things are in the city so this blockade that has drawn up during the night is a big deal to these people and not in a good way so public order has momentarily broken down and there has been some looting going on in the market people have gotten piss drunk and even though it's the just the top of the morning right now there are lewd goings on fueled by copious amount of illicitly acquired alcohol and Torga has to step over a few moving bodies, a few rhythmically moving bodies and a few bodies that are just out cold and not moving around much. And perhaps we can um, capitalize on this a little bit by inferring that there are some unconscious people around and Torga 
is in somewhat dire straits. So, hmm, do we have a chance to um, snatch a coin purse as we go? Yes or no? One, no, and... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, no, we don't have a chance to snatch a coin purse and something else happens. So something that maybe drives us off the market and makes it so we can't immediately head to the inn. Well, perhaps it's another one of those situations where, oh yeah, I have it. There is the keep, of course, overlooking the market and they have had enough of this now. And the keep's gate flies open and a band of riders descends, followed by footmen. And these are the household guard employed by one of those families that rule this place. They are mercenaries with a little bit of a extra sprinkle of sugar on top, I, I guess. And they are now descending on the town and they'll probably mow everyone down and arrest the survivors, presumably, which Torga takes as her cue with the inn as her potential salvation already inside the sign of the inn dangling and we can't quite read it yet because we don't know what the inn is called but she has to turn around and make her escape again does she manage um how do we make an escape is this a wisdom or a dexterity thing speed okay we are going to make a dexterity check against a dc of 15. that is exactly 15 so we just barely managed to dart into a narrow passageway as a horse rushes by, circling along the outside of the square, rounding up those that try to run for the hills, and Torga is one of those that succeeds. She slinks back into this webwork of narrow back alleys and passages and, and little secluded courtyards, and I think she's going to trigger another kind of event. Let's maybe uh, <clears throat> diversify a little bit. I also have a, another book of random tables for cities and towns here. That is by Dr. Tim Woods. And maybe I have something in here as well. I think we're going to approach this next scene a little differently. We're just going to happen upon a strange location that I have a die 20 table here for. And if we don't get a clear idea of uh, what happens at this strange location, we'll also roll action subject and how to set the scene. So let's determine the location for our next event. It's a nine abandoned tower. This tower is generally unoccupied, largely due to doubts founded or unfounded regarding its structural instability. Other less particularly occupants may have moved in as a result. Okay, so how do I read this? Torga wants to lay low and she has maybe a passing knowledge of this city having been here before having been through here before she knows there was an old town that used to be where the old market is before they dredged some more of the harbor and everything sort of shifted to closer to the keep and therefore the old town is crumbling and badly maintained and more of a slum which is where she now gravitates and she happens upon this abandoned looking tower ruin which is uh, showing signs of, of complete disuse and where the entrance is even sort of barred up and you have to climb over a pile of rubble to get inside which of course might just be by design to make it look abandoned so i think we can well first of all we can check whether it's occupied so is it occupied yes or no that is as likely as not so we'll roll 18 is a yes it's occupied so that is maybe a chance for us to have an actual encounter, like a, a encounter table role. So I think I like a city state encounters for this again, because it has beasts and monsters in the urban environment and it categorizes them by common, uncommon, rare and very rare. 
And since it doesn't really uh, weigh this in any way, I have taken the liberty of just making a little paradigm of distribution here. So 1 to 10 on a die 20 is common, 11 to 15 is uncommon, 16 to 18 is rare and 19 and 20 is very rare. So let's roll and see what kind of a creature is the inhabitant of this tower ruin. 10, it's a common one. So we roll our percentage dice to find out what exactly. Zero, 09, a large bat. Okay, it is um, Wayne Manor. Seen better days. Let's see if I have a large bat here. Probably do. Bat giant, bat monster. Four hit dice. Okay and massive man-sized cousins of the bat. <clears throat> they do not suck blood, but their bite is nonetheless deadly. One in 10 carries disease. Let's just determine that right off the bat <laughs> to see. So on a one, on this roll of a one die 10, this is a diseased bat. We roll a 10. I'm glad I didn't say on a 10. Uh, <laughs> so no, it's not diseased. We encounter one, I think. And it is definitely, I think, too challenging for us to fight. Depends. But it might not necessarily come to that. So let's just see whether this bat is even aggressive or whether it is initially sleepy and gives us a chance to at least spot its presence there. So aggressive, yes or no. Four, no, it's not immediately aggressive. So as Torga climbs over the rubble of a half collapsed interior floor, she ends up in the remnants of the ground floor of this tower that has been completely stripped bare of anything useful. And she tries to orient herself whether she can find a way up into the higher levels, even though the initial staircase has collapsed, there is enough rubble lying around, there are perhaps protrusions left over and remains where she can climb up. And so she looks up and the question is now, does she see in all that murk, in all that darkness, and with her eyes still presumably used to the brightness of the outside, does she see this hanging silhouette from a beam a few meters above her? That is a wisdom check against 15, I would say. So let's give it a go. That is a 14 that we roll. So she does not see it. Does the bat care though? That's the question. Uh, that is the question, so let's ask it. Does the bat care about her presence? Does the sound of Torga rummaging round there wake the bat up and does it consider her a tasty enough morsel to drop down on her and try to eat her? 20. Oh yes. And? And it surprises her. So she is uh, probably eating uh, one attack by the bat before there was a chance to uh, determine or retaliate. So if the plan here is to flee, which is not unlikely, then we're gonna at least run the risk of taking some damage or even going down before we can do so. So how do we resolve this attack? This is a four hit dice creature, which makes it have a modifier of four. So four is its attack bonus. And since I do like for this solo play uh, player facing roles and since Nave allows this we are using that plus four to determine its uh, uh, attack defense as weird as that sounds so 10 plus four is 14 which makes it Torga's DC to defend against using her armor bonus as her operative stats so we roll a die 10 we add three and we try to beat 14 and then the bat misses its initial pounce. We roll a 15. That means that the first plunging swipe as the large furry body drops down and leathery wings unfold just misses and Torga's reflexes kick in quick enough to pull back 
and now we have a fight on our hands as the bat drops onto a pile of rubble, whirls around, and we roll for initiative. And that is a fairly simple system. We just determine on a roll of one, two, three, the enemies go first, and four to six, our player character goes first. Torga goes first. Is she immediately gonna run? I don't really think so. She is going to have a hard time in this one and admittedly one bite can already kill her. But it is not a heavily armored foe and we do have a fairly sizable weapon. So the the ascending armor class of this bat is 12, which means that with our strength modifier, we actually don't do so badly in our chances to hit. Okay, so let's give this a trial whack and see how it goes. We roll against 12 with plus four. That is a hit. That means we do one die 10 of damage. That is eight damage. Okay, so how many hit points does this bat have? I've rounded up four eight-sided dice. I don't have enough shiny ones as usual. And we will see, is it a weak bat or a strong one? That is a fairly weak one, actually. That is 16 hit points. And we already took off half of that. Okay, wow. Let me just quickly check whether this is already cause for alarm in the morale department. Reducing an enemy to a lone enemy to half XP. So this is already potentially a morale break here. The game suggests a morale rating between five and nine. Now, this is a very cornered bet, I think. We have intruded into its lair. We have now wounded it quite mightily. Is it more enraged or is it now willing to forfeit its lair and run away from us to live and fight another day? Um, about as likely as not. So let's ask a closed question. Will it stand and fight? Yes. So we assume a high morale and thus we say it's a... Let's go with an eight. So we roll two die six and we have to roll under eight. Equal or under. Okay, so the bat stands and fights and pounces on Torga, which means we make that um, player facing roll again, which uh, die 20 plus three against a 14. We roll a 13, damn. Okay, Torga is uh, on a roll here, so doesn't get hit. The bat swipes, but one of its limbs is already crushed by the bite of this mighty battle axe. And we redetermine initiative. Two, the bat goes first. And we roll a natural 20 on our dodge, so on our avoidance. Does that actually have anything um, going for us? Let's see. If the attacker rolls a natural one or the defender rolls a natural 20, the attacker's weapon loses one point of quality. Well, um, the bat doesn't really have a weapon quality, but at least we don't take damage, so. Maybe, um, oh, maybe uh, we can uh, assume it just we, we any future damage that the bat potentially does, we subtract one from because as it swipes and leans forward to bite, it hits one of the metal plates and breaks a tooth, one of its like more essential pieces of its arsenal. So it does a little less damage now. We might even be more inclined to survive this bite. Um, but now we attack first. And that's a hit again. So let's see how this goes. Six. Wow, okay, it's down to two hit points with another gaping wound opening up as this heavy battle axe comes crashing down. And I think another morale check is in order. And this time it tries to get away, but Torga is in the way. So as the bat leaps forward and tries to escape outside of the half-buried entry to fly off as best it can. I think we get an attack of opportunity here. Just feels right to do that. So can we finish it off? 
That's a hit. And that's an eight. Okay, so the bat tries to save its life, but Torga isn't having any of it, crushes the skull and wipes her axe blade on the dark, bristly fur of the now lifeless creature. And we get some XP, I think. That is 240. Is that scaling okay? I don't think so. I think this is a different scaling. So um, 200 XP for high risk accomplishment, 100 for moderate risk accomplishment. Um, since this could have killed us in one bite, I feel like this warrants a high risk accomplishment and I shall take 200 XP for this. So we've conquered the tower from the bat and we, um, I don't know actually, is this edible? Is this potentially food? Let's see if Torga is able to do something with this. I mean, in the widest sense, this could be crafting or something like that. So perhaps an intelligence check. Let's do an intelligence check against a DC of 15. Uh, advantage or disadvantage? I think neither. Just let's just roll with it. <laughs> what is it? What, what is it with the 20s? Like this is getting, I'm getting iron sworn vibes here with the constant uh, uh, positive or negative matches. So uh, great success. We, I guess we improvise a meal here and Torga is an orc and not to perpetuate any stereotypes, but I think maybe that is something where she might not even be too inclined to cook this thing. She's just gonna go for the uh, bat sashimi here and identifies a, a likely piece cutting it with the sharp edge of her battle axe just slicing off some pieces and dropping them in her mouth making herself rather bloody in the process but at least we have compensated a little bit for the fact that we have left our rations behind because we don't actually have the carrying capacity to carry any rations. I really need to do something about that as well, since um, I kind of read that wrong in the beginning. I thought the um, only the combat gear took up item slots, but that is far from the case. So for now it's fine. We have enough capacity for the minuscule stuff we carry. Uh, alongside our brigandine and our battle axe. And we're no, no longer hungry. We've had a bat breakfast. And we have a tower to explore. So um, let's maybe uh, climb up to the next level. Let's make a dexterity check. That fails. So Torga does not find a decent hand or foothold here. Is that a blocking point for her to not get up there? Or is it simply that she slips and falls and can try again. Is there a way up there, yes or no? Absolutely yes, so she can get up there if she were a bit more of a talented climber, but she takes some damage, so let's say half a die six. Half of one is still one, so our current hit points go down to seven as we slide down as a pile of rubble that we are ascending comes loose and we sprain our ankle and um, yeah, we'll try again. 17 plus... Well, why am I... We need to beat 15, so... Uh, yes, okay, we go up there. Is there anything worth finding there? I mean, this was defended by a giant bat that moved in for a while. Maybe the locals have steered clear of it. So I'll call that likely. So is there something to be found here? Rolling 2, die 20, seeing if the answer is uh, yes or something. 16. Yes, okay. Yes, there is something to be found here. I'm looking at the items in a random table listing here to see if there's anything likely. Items in a warehouse, items in a bandit hideout, in a cottage, alchemist lab, adventurer's dead body. Mm. Let's do items in a bandit hideout since it's kind of an eclectic mix and I could also see this place having served as a gang hideout in the past for like a long gone set of locals that have been uh, disassembled over the years. So maybe there's some remains from those days back that the bat didn't have a use for. We roll die 100. 99, a diamond, okay. <laughs> what the hell? Um, 
<laughs> now that I look at this table, I'm kind of glad I didn't find the caged bear. Uh, a diamond. Okay, so that is uh, rather good news. That is some starting funds there. We uh, need to, of course, find a way to turn this into money. I think Torga is up on the uh, middle level where the bat was suspended from a from a beam of the exposed ceiling where part of it already crumbled. There's like a, a hole uh, through a variety of, of floors there that uh, just uh, has, has torn half of the uh, tower away and the other half is still uh, sort of suspended in the air and rather crumbling. As, as the description also said, this is, is quite uh, a shaky affair. And as she goes through the leftovers of the meals that the bat has had in its lair, some of whom uh, maybe also indicate that these were humanoid prey that was grabbed, uh, snatched off the street or even out in the, maybe even out in the wilderness. Uh, presumably this bat has quite a large, had quite a large circle of activity. So hunted the surrounding areas as well, must have grabbed something that had a diamond soon into clothing. Um, perhaps a last resort fund of a refugee that has met a grisly end and now Torga finds this rotten piece of cloth, finds that hard thing in there, rips it open, looks at the diamond, <laughs> puts it in her brigandine pocket. Interesting. Okay. And I think I want to ask uh, one additional thing, but first I want to have a wisdom check here to... Wisdom or... or intelligence uh perception intuition is wisdom tinkering with machinery precision mm. let's go with wisdom uh what what i want to know is whether this is really about to collapse or whether this could in torga's assessment of things serve as a hiding place so is there maybe a remnant of a bed frame that she can pile some of these uh remaining leftovers in the upper levels of this disused ruined towers on and, and make a, a camp here. But we need to get her intuition on whether the place is, is safe or not in her assessment. So we'll roll wisdom against a DC of 15 as usual. Okay, so that is whatever the answer is, she's wrong about it. So if this place is safe, she'll think it's not and leave. And if this place is not safe, she'll stay. <laughs> so let's see, is it safe? Yes or no? One, no, <laughs> and. <laughs> um, so no, it's not safe, but she thinks it is. And the reason is not the structural integrity, there is another reason why this place isn't safe that she may find out when she makes camp here. And would she feel like resting now? Well, actually, she's probably going to spend some time um, now that she decided this place is safe, securing it, um, making it perhaps a bit easier to ascend to the level that she's in. So she, she, she improvises or maybe she even finds a, an old rope. So we'll just imagine uh, a little montage moment here where she clears out uh, space for herself, creates a, a bit of a defensible position, um, makes it possible for her to come and go as she pleases, and maybe also cleans up the remains of the bat, maybe even like pulls it up to her level where she intends to stay. So she spends some time and the tower doesn't collapse because the danger and the risk associated with this isn't the tower itself. So what is it? Mm. <laughs> um, good question. I'm wondering whether I should introduce something new here or whether I should tie this to the fact that she is being pursued still by the mercenaries and that she has a tail that is, now that she's stationary, able to report back on where she is and potentially have her confronted there or picked up again. But I think I, I like it better to introduce some element of the locality here. So where this bat was perhaps uh, not as much of a deterrent for some of the locals here that use this place as a as a hideout or something. There's maybe 
maybe there's a, a bottom level that serves as an actual hideout for something where the bat is considered almost like a guard dog of sorts and that is now something that Torga runs afoul of so maybe a denizen of some sort of the subterranean level here hmm I don't even think it necessarily has to be a hostile encounter just the fact that this place has some other use and other users would already be cause for Torga to at least negotiate or try to impress whoever this is or maybe they are hostile so I feel like we could use this um, common uncommon rare very rare paradigm for the encounters in this city-state encounters to um, look at the list of people in an urban environment and see what type of person uses the downstairs of this abandoned tower and has it camouflaged in some way that there is like a trap door under some rubble that is easily moved aside so let's um roll the die 20 to see what type of a person it is that is 1 to 10 for common 11 to 15 uncommon 16 to 18 rare at 19 and 20 very rare 14 is an uncommon person or persons. We'll roll our percentage dice again. 10. Barbarian. Low level. Interesting. Okay, so I guess this is a barbarian outsider to the city displaced into the city for some reason. And since the barbarian doesn't really see the point in paying rent if they can find a likely subterranean hidey hole and especially one that is protected by a giant bat with which the barbarian may have struck some kind of accord maybe now this hidden trapdoor opens and the barbarian emerges just as Torga is letting down the rope and descending herself to head out into the city and those two will have a meeting and we'll have that one next time. So thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you then and bye for now.